All right, so we're gonna look at DNA real quick, and then we're gonna um, go over codons and how this is related to protein production. So we talked about this earlier, DNA consists of nucleotides, right? And they are the subunits or building blocks for actually both DNA and RNA. Now, when you look at the DNA nucleotide structure, there are three components, right? I talk about this in the T6 video, so I don't want to spend too much time here. So just a quick recap. The three components in each nucleotide are phosphate, right, on the outer part, deoxyribose sugar, so that's a pentose sugar, five carbon sugar in the middle, and then on the inner part, that's the nitrogenous base, right? We have a four different bases, and that's why in DNA there are four different nucleotides because they have the four different because they all have different bases. So A is adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. Okay, now what is the DNA sequence? How is it related to um, protein production? Just really a kind of sequence of di different nucleotides, right? So when you read this, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, but when uh, the enzymes use that sequence to make mRNA or uh, from the mRNA sequence to amino acid sequence, it makes a lot of sense. And this is how the enzymes in our body read the DNA or RNA sequence. In this sequence, the secret lies in a set of three nucleotides. And we call each set a codon. Each codon codes for a particular amino acid. Right? So you can read it here. Um, let's say uh, UCU codes for serine. That's a pretty common uh, amino acid. UAU codes for tyrosine. UGU codes for cysteine. Now you're going to say, hey, um, these, this table has U's, but there, there, there are no U's in DNA. You are correct. But remember, when we make amino acid chains, we make amino acid from mRNA sequence, right? And then in mRNA, we have A, U, G, C. Wrong direction for the arrow. So that's why the codon table is based on the nucleotides in mRNA. But that's OK. You can just think of U's as T's. That's totally OK. Because when you do transcription and then do translation, the U uh, really corresponds with the T in DNA. Once we um, have the sequence of amino acids, right, based on the sequence of the DNA, then um, the cell will put all the amino acids in the correct order. And you know that amino acids are the building blocks for proteins, right? So proteins are normally multiple chains of amino acids. Sometimes it's one chain of amino acid, but most of the times um, a cell will have to make multiple chains of amino acids and then put them together as a functional protein. Okay, mutation has been added to T7. It makes a lot of sense, right? And mutations are basically the cause for cancer, which has been so common in modern society. Um, so since this is new, I would expect to have a high, higher chance of seeing some questions on mutations in T's. Now, what is a mutation? Mutation is a change in the nucleotide sequence in DNA. Okay, remember DNA is the blueprint, right? So everything originates from DNA. DNA decides what mRNA you get and then what amino acid sequence you get. So the mutation has to happen in DNA. And there are different types of mutations. You may have a substitution. That's when one nucleotide is replaced by a different nucleotide. So in this case, the A in this sequence is changed to T, right? So this is a substitution. Insertion, uh, straightforward, right? One nucleotide is inserted in the sequence. So if you compare these two sequences, there's an extra C inserted, and this causes a mutation. And next one is deletion. Um, actually, um, if you have a copy of this slide, I accidentally put the two sequences backwards. So this is the normal sequence, and this is the 
mutated sequence. So one of the Gs could be the first G, could be the second G, but one of them is deleted from the sequence, right? So this is the mutated sequence you get in the end. All right, most of the mutations, believe it or not, result in no change in protein products because of two main reasons. There are other reasons, but these two main reasons contribute a lot to this no change. The first one is if you look at the codon table, you notice that um, each amino acid is often coded by multiple codons, right? So proline, there are the four different codons that all code for proline. So if there is a mutation that happens to the last nucleotide of this codon, doesn't matter what you change, right? Um, you will get proline. So even if there's a mutation, the protein is going to remain the same. Okay? So that's one of the contributing factors. Another contributing factor is here, remember for each gene, there are parts that don't really code for proteins, right? They're just kind of fillers. So those fillers actually um, consist of the, uh, the majority of a gene. So if there's a mutation you know, happening to a nucleotide in the intron section, it doesn't matter, right? Because that section doesn't code for protein. So the mutation is going to cause no impact. But some mutations do lead to change in the protein, and that will result in abnormal proteins, which will cause cell dysfunctions, and this will likely cause diseases, including cancer, right? Cancer is really just a mutation leading to monster cells. They don't stop growing and multiplying. So that's basically what cancer is. When there are mutations, cells can repair the mutations. There are enzymes that can detect the mutations and they will use the other DNA strand as a template and then fix the mutation in the other strand. Well, if the mutations are too bad, nothing can be repaired, the cell can initiate self-destruction. That's uh, a very good thing to do, right? It benefits the entire organism. Uh, if the bad cells are eliminated from the body, then there won't be any diseases, right? So this is a self-protection mechanism. But if all these actions fail, then mutations will persist and, accumu and accumulate, and this could lead to abnormality and diseases. Okay, let's look at RNA real quick. RNA uh, is a very interesting molecule. There are three types of RNA, and you do need to know the function for each RNA. mRNA is messenger RNA. That's a copy of a gene from DNA, right? But remember, in RNA, we don't have Ts. Instead, we have Us. Now, RNAs are normally a lot smaller than DNA. Um, so here, mRNA is uh, normally pretty big, right? But mRNA is normally the biggest among all the RNAs. But mRNA is only about the size of one gene on a DNA molecule, right? Remember, one DNA molecule may carry you know, hundreds of genes, thousands of genes. So mRNA is really small. tRNA is also known as transfer RNA. So tRNA is basically like a pickup truck, right? They uh, grab on to amino acids and then they deliver amino acids to ribosomes to make, to make amino acid chain. Now, ribosomal RNA, rRNA, is part of the ribosome. Ribosomes make proteins. And part of the ribosome is ribosomal RNA. There are a few differences between DNA and RNA. I talk about the smaller size of RNA compared to DNA. RNA is a single-stranded. This is important, single-stranded. DNA is double-stranded. mRNA is uh, just a copy of a, one of the two DNA strands. We talk about the, difference, uh, the difference in nucleotides, right? Uh, so whenever you see a sequence with U, then you know that has to be RNA sequence. If you see sequence with T, then you know it's DNA sequence. Now, in terms of function, DNA stores genetic information, but RNA assists 
with production of the gene products, which are basically proteins, right? How does RNA assist? All of these things, right, are involved in protein production, which is basically gene expression. Okay, now let's look at the first practice question. I rank the following from large to small. I know a lot of people tend to arrange everything from small to large, but uh, this is a little bit tricky, right? Make sure you make sure you arrange everything from large to small. The largest one is going to be chromosomes, and then we have DNA, and then we have genes. Genes have many codons. Each codon codes for an amino acid. Now, each codon has three nucleotides. So this is how you know that the codons are going to be bigger than nucleotides. That's the correct answer. OK, next question. Which of the following statements about nucleotides, genes, and chromosomes is correct? Select all that apply. A, chromosomes are segments of genes that consist of DNA and histone proteins. Now, this part is correct, right? Chromosomes do consist of DNA and histone proteins, but chromosomes are a lot bigger than genes, right? Like each human chromosome can carry so many genes. So this first part is not correct. B, nucleotides are subunits of DNA, and there are four different nucleotides in DNA. That's correct. C, segments of chromosomes that code for proteins are known as DNA. That's not right, right? Um, first, we need to change here. Segments of DNA that code for proteins are known as genes. D, segments of DNA that code for proteins. Okay, that is the correct statement. Last one. Each codon consists of two nucleotides and codes for a particular amino acid. This is correct, but this part, the first part is wrong. It should be three nucleotides. So correct the answer is B and D. Question three. Okay, so this is about mutation. A, mutation may lead to the production of the same protein or a different protein. That's correct, right? Remember, we went over the codon table and each amino acid can be determined by multiple codons. So if the mutation changes one codon to the other codon, but the two codons code for the same amino acid, the protein product is going to be the same. B, Mutation originates in RNA as, and is passed on to DNA. That's not correct, right? Originates in DNA. And when we do transcription, we make RNA from DNA, then that mutation is passed on to RNA. And that happens in the transcription step. C. In ATT, A is replaced by T, and the new codon is TTT. This mutation is a substitution. That's correct, right? One nucleotide is replaced by another one. So C is also correct. D, mutation originates in protein sequence. That's wrong. Just remember, it has to originate in DNA. E, mutation can occur during DNA replication. That is correct because DNA polymerase, that's just a fancy name for the enzyme that replicates DNA. So this enzyme can make mistakes. And when it makes mistakes, it adds on a wrong nucleotide. That leads to mutation. 
All right. Next time, we're going to talk about DNA replication.